my name is Timo Chayanto. Uh, I'm a sort of a filmmaker. This is my first time doing something very formal, so I'm going to do it a bit different uh, than the usual, right? Because if I talk too formal, then it gets really weird. But anyway, I'm a, I'm a, you know, officially like maybe some people have heard of me, maybe a lot of most of you haven't. But like officially, my uh, occupation is a filmmaker. But uh, I started from a lot of you, you know, like uh, I'm. I was a student at some point a long, long time ago, and. You know, like I was studying in a high school in Sydney, Australia, and I was sitting there, like my like my niece Audrey, who's playing the iPhone right now, <laughs> uh, and I was thinking, uh, well, maths is good and chemistry is good. It's very hard. Physics is very hard, but it's kind of cool. So, and I'm unfortunately not really good at those. What I really like is actually getting in touch with my, with my uh, artistic side. Uh, so occasionally I would like to draw, I would like to make up stories. I want to tell a story, but I don't want to tell just a love story or a drama story. Like I like the idea of making people scared, you know? I like the idea of like uh, watching something, like making something and people watch it and they can be disgusted, they can be scared, but the important thing is they're not bored. So that's where I kind of like realized that maybe the best path for me is to be a storyteller than eventually a filmmaker. This is my latest film. Uh, again, like maybe, I don't know if you guys subscribe to Netflix, but like uh, my latest film was actually uh, assigned by Netflix. And uh, I have an idea of an action film where Oh, it's about a bad guy who really wants to do one good thing, and in the process of doing so, he end up creating like a war, a war zone in Jakarta. It's called The Night Comes For Us. It's been playing since October 19th, and if you check it out in Netflix, like you also get that stuff. This is my film called Killers, and I'm telling you this because it's like, this is all the sort of different genre that I'm doing, and. Uh, with Killers, this is actually a psychological thriller drama. So, you know, like it's still kind of, it's still a process, it's still something that you can consider a horror film, but in a more sort of like realistic approach. A story of like two serial killer, one is in Jakarta and then another one is in Tokyo, Japan. And they both have kind of like a twisted uh, relationship where they end up being, having like this kind of competition on who could, who could kill the most people in the most creative way. So that was kind of my, my second film. Uh, so yeah, if you guys ever, one day you guys turn 18, or a lot of you are already over 18 here anyway, like check it out, like it's already out in iTunes and it's in, in Netflix as well. So yeah, uh, in between all this stuff, like I also did uh, Headshot, another film that I work with, uh, Iko Weiss, Indonesian martial artist, and right now he's actually doing very well in Hollywood, so. Uh, that's also my experience as I go through my career as a filmmaker. So it's not really strictly just horror, but like at the same time, there's a, there's a very sort of like huge love for me for horror. Anyway, this is me when I was young. I'm just telling you a little bit, I'm gonna rewind in the beginning of my career, you know? This is TED Talk, so you know, let me enlighten you guys of how it started. Uh, when I was seven years old, when I don't have any inkling at all about like how to appreciate films, how to enjoy films other than, you know, like your mother will put something on on your uh, video cassette player and then you just watch it, you know. But like as a seven years old, I can tell you the first experience that I have that really sort of like changed my life. You know, like I was assuming a lot of you will be young, so I put a picture of a Betamax tape. Now we are changing into this era where we are playing with a DVD player or a Blu-ray player or like files. But back then, uh, Betamax tape is like a gold bar for, for a lot of us, you know. So one day in our old house, my older sister, Audrey's mom, decided to put a, a videotape in the, in, the, in the living room. And I was asking, what's, what's this film? And he, she was saying, like, oh, it's a kid's movie. You're going to like it, you know. 
And so I was like sitting there, starting uh, preparing to enjoying this film. And she puts it, she put it in into the video player, and it turns out to be Psycho, this old 1960s film created by Alfred Hitchcock. And you know, the story is simple. The story is actually about uh, Marion Crane, a woman who's kind of like stole some money, and she decides to make a run for it. When she makes a run for it, she's stuck in this motel owned by Norman Bates, who is this, re who's this really unusual character. Uh, he's not at all hostile. He's kind of weird. He's kind of weird. He's kind of a little bit unhinged and off kilter. So, as a seven years old, like I was watching all these imageries, you know, and and I was like thinking, like this is a strange thing. Like I don't understand a single bit of it. But like, what really sticks to me is actually these sort of unusual imageries, you know, like this visual that the director of it Hitchcock used. Uh, first of all, you know, when you are a kid, you want to see everything in color. So when you see something black and white, for you, it's kind of like, i never seen this before. But, uh, you know, like these imageries of, pe uh, of Norman Bates kind of like peeking to uh, Marion as she's taking a shower and all that stuff. And, you know, like eventually, you know, like I'm probably spoiling things for some of you guys who wants to watch this in the future. But <laughs> eventually, like, you see this figure who is like a, a, a woman behind a curtain shower and, she's, and she starts stabbing Marion. And as a seven years old, you see this image and it really sticks to you. It really traumatizes you in a, in a strange way, you know, like, and I'm pretty sure you guys have all this kind of little experience that you, that, you exp that you experience whenever, perhaps when you are sleeping, when you are watching something that is so unusual and you see it and you can't comprehend it. Like for me, that's a powerful moment where I kind of realized that visuals like images in films has such a strong impression on me. Okay, for example, this image, you know, like this image is, a, is an image where Norman's mom, who turns out to be a murderer, you know, like uh, there's a police detective coming into the house and he's walking through the stairs and suddenly from the shot in the front, you start to see things from this perspective. And for me, a seven-year-old boy, this was really strange and unusual. It's very shocking, you know, and suddenly you see this figure just start running and stabbing him. And, you know, like, I can, I can honestly say, like, I was crying and I was like, oh, my God, like, I don't want to see this anymore. So, you know, like, I run away from the living room to, to the dining area. But the fact that you can still hear this sort of crazy soundtrack, this unusual high-pitched violin, and for you guys who watch uh, Psycho or maybe will watch Psycho later on, you'll recognize that the film has such a big trademark uh, high-pitched violin scoring, you know. And sometimes... When you hear something so powerful and so unusual, it becomes even more scarier than if, if you watch it together with the image. Because like when you don't see the picture, but you hear the sound, you hear the screaming of a guy getting stabbed, then your imagination runs wild. So even as a, as a kid, as a seven years old, like you, know, like you start to see, like, I don't want to see this. Like, but like in your head, you're already creating this image. And from that point, you know, like uh, I, I always joke uh, to my wife and to my to my family that, you know, like, thanks to this film, like, I, I wasn't brave enough to sleep by myself until I was, like, 11 or 12 years old. Because, like, every time the, the, the room goes dark and, you know, like, there's nobody in the room, like, I got so terrified of the shadows of, like, all these kind of, like, dark places, of these unusual sounds that, you know, you hear when nighttime, nighttime is already arriving. And, you know, all this time, like, this trauma is sort of building in me. But at the same time, I kind of realized as I grow older that this is something that is actually not a bad thing because by creating this fear, this sort of like trauma within you, you're also creating this thing called like imagination and creativity. So, you know, at the cost of uh, uh, not being able to sleep by myself until I was 11 years old, I think that's a pretty fair price to pay. So, okay, fast forward when I was 12 years old. So at this point, I actually learned to say, okay, I'm gonna try to sleep by myself now, all right? So, and I did, you know, like by the time I was 12, like I started sleeping by myself. But then I made a mistake of like switching on the TV. So when I was switching on the TV, there's this image of a clown who's smiling at you, like he's looking at the camera, carrying a red balloon. And then he starts smiling, and then as the camera sort of like pushes in close to him, 
like this is the image that you see, you know, like like this clown with the terrifying fangs and you know, like with these eyes, distorted eyes. And so now I discover something else. Not only I'm afraid of dark of dark places, of strange noises, I'm also afraid of clowns. So there you go, like all this phobia is like building up in you and then you realize like there are certain things that you fear more than the rest of stuff, you know, like obviously you learn to know that this film is actually the original Stephen King's It. I think a lot of you have seen the remake, which is also a great film, but this film is truly terrifying for me for a lot of reasons. Like it, it, it brings back in me like an image that like I can't never forget, like, you know, Pennywise the clown, he's actually like lurking in the, in the sewer, like waiting for kids to pass. And that's something like, how do you create that? Like, how do you create that ID? You know, like, it is terrifying, but at the same time, it's also, I don't know, like, you know, like, maybe some of you guys, uh, when you guys are driving or you guys are being driven, you know, like you see, uh, you know, unfortunately you see a dead dog by the side of the road. And it's such a sad image, you know, but like at the same time, maybe you start questioning yourself, like how, how does the dog get there? Like, does it belong to someone? Like, uh, uh, was it owned by somebody and then it got lost and then it got hit by a car? So, you know, like there's always an interesting aspect where you sort of like taking this little thing, sometimes it's dark things, sometimes it's happier things, but then you create a story out of it, you know? So that's pretty much how sort of like I started to think, hey, you know, like rather than just being afraid all the time, maybe I can sort of like turn this into something creative. Uh, okay, so what's a horror film? You get fear, you get excitement, you get terror, anxiety, sadness, because sometimes you see this character that you don't want to, that you want to, that you want the character to survive, but it, but like he or she dies, you know, like, so there's also a lot of like emotional things that you can get from a horror film. Phobia, definitely, like I'll, I'll explain to you before. You know, I, if I just have to count from all the phobias that I got from watching great horror films, like there's so many of them. When I watch Jaws, I don't even want to go to the beach anymore. You know, like that's it. Like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good swimmer, you know, like, but every time I go to the beach, then I go to the, I go jump into the water, then I see, you know, all this cloudy sort of like sandy water that I can't see. I start to think about like, maybe there's a shark waiting for me at, in the front, uh, at the other end, you know, like, so I decided like, Okay, beach is over for me. So I'm from now on. I'm just gonna swim in the swimming pool. So you know that's a that's the strength of a, a powerful film. Now me, I made my films like my cup, first couple films with my best friend Kimo. We we both are called the Mo Brothers, and this is our first film, Dara, 2007. We made it. So you know like. I made my first short film when I was 27, you know, so it's not like exactly young, but what I'm trying to say is sometimes creativity, it takes time to sort of like develop, you know. I was saying to your teacher, Mr. Chris, before that, you know, like initially I was, even though I always have a great love for films, but like, uh, you know, like career, sometimes you have to try out a lot of stuff first before until you realize this is the one that you really want. So. I started from doing design, like, uh, and then like uh, hi art history and all that stuff. Then I realized like those things are fun, but uh, it's not really my calling, you know. So after you know studying overseas, and then I went back to Indonesia. I start becoming, uh, I start working as a photo freelance photographer and also as a storyboard artist. Storyboard artist is the guy who draws stuff that's gonna eventually gonna be on your screen. And I realized, like, I didn't really enjoy this. Like, I really want to tell a story. I, I don't want to tell an original story, but I want to tell an entertaining and terrifying story. So by 2007, like, we decided, like, let's make a short film. And this short film is called Dara. So Dara is a simple story. Like, it tells a story of a mysterious young woman who opens a restaurant, and the, the food is very well known to be delicious there. You know, like, she's a mysterious woman, and sometimes, because she's beautiful, men would like to ask like are you single and you know she'll say yes i'm single like if you want to have a date with me you can come to my place and little do they know that like she has a secret on what's her, what's really in her food so there's a secret ingredients to her food and the secret ingredient is of obviously human flesh and so the story the story is very simple the setup is the main guy like the main unfortunate guy who's having a date with her Wake, wakes up in her slaughter room where he's actually already, he's ready to be slaughtered. But there's a twist there, like 
as, as he's about to get slaughtered, like Dara, the main villain of the film, forgets that she also have another date she set up that she forgot. So by the time she's about to kill the guy, Aji, another guy came, in, came along, and so he, she has to serve this unfortunate soul. You know, like, so the film also turns into, so I, what I'm saying is like, you can twist and turn a film so that it's not purely horror. Sometimes you can also turn it to make it a comedy, even though it's a pretty dark comedy, you know, like, imagine one guy in the slaughter room trying to, trying to escape, like he's trying to, uh, you know, like he's trying to f free himself from the shackles. At the same time, Dara is in the dining room killing these two unfortunate souls who just want to have a date with her. So that's against a girl with a woman holding a chainsaw. But, you know, like with this stuff, like, there's a lot of fun to be had because like we are discussing about like, okay, how do you, how do you make you pushing the chainsaw against your face, but it's still safe, you know, like, and you got to remember like in a film set, things can get really stressful and hot, but sometimes things can also get really, really cold and extreme because like, for example, this is probably one of the, the hardest, like, see, I'm, I'm making a note there, the hardest thing I ever done, which is shooting in the forest, you know, with forests, like the weather is always unpredictable and then you get like mosquito attacks on here. <laughs> and sometimes the weather gets really cold to the point like the actor is actually shivering and then you have to stop shooting so you can just put a blanket on them. And once like, are you warm enough? Are you, are you okay to go? So then we start shooting again. So this is just another example of it. Like we were shooting in uh, Bogor in the jungle there. And it's a chase scene. So there's a lot of like running around the hill and rolling around the mud and all that stuff. All the fun stuff bas basically. Anyway, uh, I want to conclude that each of you, like, you have stories, you know, like, and sometimes the best stories are the ones that has actually never been told. So, it, talking generally, not just from a horror perspective, but also from you, maybe one day some of you want to say, maybe I want to be a filmmaker. And then, you know, like, you always start from inside, you know, like, because individually, I, I believe that every one of you have, like, these stories that you guys still keep inside. And then once you put it out in the paper, it can be personal, but it can also be something that is purely entertaining. You know, like you have such a crazy story. You have the story about a two nurse and one priest going into a bar and some crazy stuff happening. You know, like it can begin from that. And once you put it in the paper, once you put it as a script, and then you start realizing maybe I want that to be translated into the screen. And see, for me, that's the beauty of filmmaking. So yeah. I hope you guys uh, are a little bit more persuaded. Maybe someday, one day, you guys will be behind the camera and then you say, hey, thank you, Timo, for inspiring me. You know, if not, then at least I'm you know, explaining why me, as an adult, sometimes I still feel like a child. Because like, when I go into a film set, it's like me, hey, hold on, I'm 38 years old, but now I feel like a 15-year-old with all these uh, cool toys that I can play with, you know, the actors, the camera, the camera rig, the makeup, and all that stuff. So yeah, guys, thank you. <laughs>